In the previous couple of lessons, we learned a lot about Bing Map APIs. So we learned how to draw a map and put some data on it. We learned how to create matrices for distance and time between locations. But I know some of you are even hungrier for something more developed. So in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to try to solve something called VRP, Vehicle Routing Problem in Excel. What does it mean? Basically, imagine that you have some locations where you have some goods and you have a bunch of trucks. You could have different capacities in the trucks, etc. And you have clients scattered around many locations. So how should you schedule your pickup or delivery? Which truck should go where? When should the truck go? At what time? And so on. So this is what we're going to try to solve in this. And the good news is that this workbook that you see here, you can download it and you can use it to solve this problem. The only thing that you'll need is a Bing Maps key. And this is a free key that you can get. If you go to my previous video, you're going to see how to do it. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can check it out. So I'm going to assume that you have a key and you have pasted it here. So let's go and start with our example and you'll understand how this works. The first thing you need to do is you need to ensure that macros are enabled. Then you go here under VRP spreadsheet solver and you have several steps. So we're going to start with step number one, which is filling this Excel sheet. So you have to fill everything that is green. The language is fine. We're going to keep English. That's the key. And then we start with the number of depots. So this is where you have the merchandise. In this example, I'm going to put one place where we have the merchandise. You could have two, three, up to 20. Because obviously Excel is great. It's flexible. But for computation, it might have limitation. So if you have a lot of depots, if you have a lot of customers, if you need to work on something professional, you might buy a software. But for most of us, I think this Excel will suffice. Then you have the number of customers. You can have between five to 200 customers. I'm going to keep it at five again to make it simple for you. Then you look at distances. Distance computation method. So we're going to use Bing Maps driving distances. If you see here, you have several options. You can use miles. You can do many things. But this is, I think, the one that is the best for me. Then we have duration computation method. So here you can do manual entry. You can do average vehicle speed. If you choose this one, then you can set up the speed here. If you don't choose it, then this will get ignored. So we're going to use Bing Maps driving duration which means that it will look at Bing Maps and it will look at the duration you have to drive in order to go from one place to the other. Then we select how we're going to go. So we're going to drive. You have truck and you have walking as options also. And then you can choose the route type. So I advise you to put the fastest. And then you can check this Bing Map route detail level. So this is the detail level. I've put it at 10. Again, you can keep it as is. The next thing we need to look at is the number of vehicle types. What does it mean? It means let's assume that I have one vehicle that only can have 50 parcels and the other one can have 200 parcels, for example. So then I will have several types of vehicles and I have to set up each type of vehicle and say how many vehicles do I have of each type? So again, for simplicity, I'm going to keep one. Do the vehicle return to their depots? So after doing the deliveries, should they return to the depot? Yes, at the end. Otherwise, you have also, yes, may do so multiple times and you have no that they just go and don't come back. So you choose whatever is best for you. For this example, I'm going to say that they come at the end. Time window type hard, because again, you have to set up for each vehicle how many miles or kilometers you can drive a day, and you have to set up how many hours you can drive per day. Because as you know, 
the drivers can get tired, you have some limitations, etc. So all this can be taken into account. And then you have backhauls, which means that if you say yes, you need to visit the delivery location and then you go to the pickup location. Because what if I load my truck, then I go, I have to deliver everything and then I pick up from other customers. If I go to pick up directly, I won't have space in my truck, right? So here I'm going to say no. Then for visualization, we're going to use Bing Maps. And then location labels, you have several options. I'm just going to put the location names. Warm start, let's put it yes. Show progress on the status bar, yes. And then CPU time limit. You need to put at least 60 seconds because again, Excel needs time to compute and you don't want any time out. So once you set up this, you can go to locations and you do set up location worksheet. So here we go. Based on this, it has created one depot and five customers. Why? Because we have one depot and five customers. So we need to start filling this. So I took some data here. I'm just gonna copy paste it. I'm copy pasting the addresses, as you can see. Those are addresses in Dubai. And then for this to work, you need the latitude and longitude. Now, if you don't know the latitude and longitude of each of the location, you can go to location and you can say populate lat long using addresses. But make sure that the addresses that you have are correct. If you have very detailed addresses, Bing might not give you the right results. So you have to be careful when you get the lat long for all your data points. Now we're going to use this. It says that it needs 10 seconds, so we say yes. And it will start populating the latitude and longitude of every location that I have, my depot and my customers. And here on the map, you can see this is my depot in black and those are my customers in green. They are across the city. After looking at the map and checking that my addresses are correct, then I can move to the next steps. Here you have an optional step. If you click here, it will sort everything from A to Z, but I typically don't use this. Then after setting the locations, we look at the distances. So we go to set up distances worksheet. We click on it. It will take nearly nothing. We say, okay. So what happens here? Here it has put all my combinations. So if you go there, I have default customer, etc. So it will do default to customer one, default to customer two, default to customer three, customer one to default, customer one to customer two, etc. So this is the matrix of all the combinations that you have. And you need to populate it because you need to know the distance between two locations, any combination, and you need to know how long it will take to drive. So if you click Populate Distances Worksheet, this is what's going to happen. As you can see, I will get the results. So here, for example, between the depot and customer 2, the distance is 7.97 kilometers and I need 16 minutes and so on. So, so far, simple, right? Then, after that, you need to define your vehicles. So set up Vehicle Worksheet. What is happening here? If you go back to your assumptions, we said that we have one type of vehicle. We can have multiple vehicle with this type. So if I go here, you can see I have vehicle type only one. I don't have more. If I have set two, I could have multiple types. So here, if you notice, I have the capacity, but I also have some financials. So in case, for example, you are into finance and you want to optimize also your cost, then you can use a fixed cost per trip, cost per unit distance, so we can put zero, duration multiplier, etc. The most important thing here is the distance limit. So here it says that I can do 560 kilometers per day. So you can change this. And here it will tell me when do I start at 8 a.m. for example, how many hours I can drive maximum and how many hours I can work maximum. So here I can drive nine hours and I can work 10 hours. Again, you can play with these assumptions. And as you can see, it says return to depot. Why? Because we said that we have to come back to our depot. 
And then we have the number of vehicles. So instead of one, I'm going to say two. So two vehicles I have of this type. Fine. Next, after that, we go to set up vehicle compatibility worksheet. Here it will open another sheet where you can say, for example, for customer one, my vehicle type one is compatible, but I can say it's incompatible. So if you have several types of vehicles here and one vehicle is incompatible, then the algorithm will not send this vehicle to pick up something or deliver something from customer one. But for us, we have one type of vehicle and it's compatible with all our clients and with the depot also. So we don't need to do anything here. Next, we go to the solution. Set up solution worksheet. So here in this solution, you have two options. You have a manual option where you just select the clients you want to visit. And then let's say I select customer two and you get all the data for it. So for example, it takes 7.97 uh, kilometers, 16 minutes, the truck, if it goes at 8, will arrive at 8.16, and so on, right? And you can do this, then you can check the feasibility of your solution to see whether you have changed something, whether it's going to work or not. But for now, we're not going to do this. We're just going to use the algorithm because I think it's a good way to optimize your route. And as you can see, I created in the previous sheet two vehicles. So I said I have two vehicles here, right? So if I go back here, I have vehicle one, that's a schedule, and vehicle two, that's a schedule, right? And if you have set up something and it's not feasible, when you're going to click the buttons, it will tell you why it's not feasible. For example, you have exceeded the time, the work time. For example, you drove more than you should and so on. So in case you don't want to set up any manual solution, you can just continue and go to visualization, you can do set up visualization worksheet. You say, okay. Then you get a worksheet where you have your customers, you have your depot, and you have anything that you have set up. If you see here this red, I have set up like one trip here. So it shows me the trip on the map. And also in this sheet, you can see that you can select your truck. So here I can show all my trucks. I can show one truck or the second truck. Next is the solver. So we say engage VRP spreadsheet solver. As you can see, it has performed iterations and it found a solution. So we say yes, we want to see the solution. And here is the solution. So basically one truck will be enough. The truck will work for two hours and the truck will visit customer three first, five, one, four, and then two. And the second truck, I don't need it because the first truck can do the whole work. So this solution recognizes this if you have extra vehicles. So if I go to the map, if you remember, we have three, five, one, four, two. As you can see, this is my depot. So it's gonna go to customer three first, five, then one, then four, two, and it comes back to the depot. And these are all my vehicles. If I put vehicle two, Nothing happens because vehicle two has no roster. We don't need it, right? If you wanted to check a manual solution feasibility, you can use feasibility check here, and then you can check whether what you have put makes sense or not. And this is how you solve VRP problems in Excel with an algorithm and Bing maps in the back.